afternoon, oh, good morning. Hey, the day has already, <laughs> sorry. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, who, 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 good morning. Who do we have here? Good morning. Good morning, good morning, all of you. Um, I'm excited to be here this morning to take you through ESG. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to see uh, your faces. Maybe I'll stop sharing and take about two minutes to see who is in the room. Take about two minutes to see who. Uh, who do we have here? Let me see. Okay. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. Lovely, 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 lovely. All right. So, I mean, I, I don't know how your business currently is or what the opportunities or challenges have been, but the very essence of being called an entrepreneur is because we are problem solvers. And whenever there are challenges in the economy, entrepreneurs are supposed to thrive and not complain. So I'm hoping that in all the lessons that are being taught you yesterday and today, you are learning ways that you're going to enhance your businesses and ensure that you're consistently thriving. So thank you so much for joining. We've already lost some time, so I'll just say a quick hello to the ones I see. Gabriel, uh, Mohammed, Miriam, and all of you. Hello. I don't know how many of you have heard this uh, term before, ESG, or Environment, Social, and Governance. I'm sure when we break it down, you probably will have an idea about what ESG is. But if you've ever heard of ESG, ESG, let me see your hand wave, or let me just see some icons, uh, or maybe you can raise your hand. Have you ever heard of the term ESG? ESG. Okay. Okay. Uh, Suleiman says he has. Okay, a few of you have. That's great. That's great. That means you are ahead of the time, which is very, very good. Um, so then it's going to make my work easy. Um, so I'll just take you through quickly, and then we would make some time to ask questions. So allow me to share my screen so that we can move on straight to the topic of the day. Please, can you see my screen? Can you see my screen, yes. please? Yes. Okay, great. So my name is Eko Mensa. Um, I'm the CEO of EMI Africa, EMI Group Africa. Uh, for those of you who might be curious a bit, you could just go to emigroup.africa and you will find out a bit more about me. I'm also the director of the Africa ESG Institute and currently working with the Chamber of Commerce and Development Bank on teaching a thousand businesses across Africa I mean, across Ghana, on ESG, ESG practices, ESG frameworks, and why ESG is important. And I'm very excited to be doing this for the Chamber of Young Entrepreneurs as well, because I've been with the Chamber for a while, and I'm happy that we are really getting ahead of our time and positioning the members to be able to understand and implement ESG practices that will ensure the sustainability of their businesses. So. Today, I'm excited to be here with you. Uh, we're going to look at this. Um, it's a new thing that is coming up, but it's getting pretty advanced in other parts of the world. But uh, essentially for Development Bank and the Chamber, uh, the focus is how do we get businesses to be more sustainable? How do we get businesses to literally outlive the founders that set them up? And how do we build the structure of businesses to ensure continuity regardless of changing uh, people or changing um, situations. Basically, that's what the focus of ESG is about. How do we build a structure and systems in place that would ensure continuity of business regardless of who is running the business? And a lot of the time, you realize that um, most of us don't even know businesses in Ghana that are about 50 years old, you know, and, and it's because they, they don't put in place those systems 
that ensure that the businesses have sustainability and continuity beyond those that founded it. And ESG actually seeks to do that and ensure that every business has in place those policies and systems built around frameworks that would ensure continuity of business. Uh, the focus is to make sure that when you receive funding, especially, the business is able to thrive beyond the short term, not just to pay back the money, but to be able to expand to help eradicate essential economic needs like poverty, uh, private sector development, and other things that businesses can't do. So that's why something like ESG is, an, uh, is, is important. And uh, most of you can see that it is made up of three basic thematic areas, which is environmental, social, and governance. I just want you to, I don't know if we can text on this platform, is there a chat box? If there's a chat box, I would want to know if you know anything about ESG. If you know anything about ESG, if you could just type just a one-liner what you know about ESG or what you think the importance of ESG is. Okay. Okay, so whilst I wait, I'll move on to the areas that we are going to cover today. One is what is ESG? Two is stakeholder engagement in the ESG process. Three is sample ESG framework. Four is ESG guidelines. Five is stakeholder value creation uh, chain. Six is alignment of SDGs to your businesses under ESG. And I'm sure a lot of you have heard of sustainable development goals before. And now, because of the implementation of ESG policies, we've been able to group uh, the SDGs under the various ESG thematic areas. And I'm sure when you see it, you'll better appreciate it. Uh, we're also going to look at stakeholders demanding ESG commitments. The people that are now demanding for companies to be committed to ESG, we are going to look at the benefits of adopting an ESG framework Six steps to implementing ESG, sustainable development, sustainable business practices for SMEs, and of course, we are going to, if we have time, look at the Ghana Sustainable Banking Principles. In the next, uh, please mute. In, in the next 40 hello. minutes, hello? Oh, okay, that's great. So, in the next 40 minutes or so, we are going to take a look at all these things and I'm hoping that we'll be able to have time to also relate it to our business for all of us to see the importance of it. And especially for those that are seeing or hearing about ESG for the first time, it is a very good time to hear about it because the more you pay attention to it, the more attractive your business becomes, not just to various stakeholders, but especially to investors. Um, now, globally, impact investment funds are attracting more funding than any other funds because people believe that doing business is not, you know, like some people trying to make money, but doing business should not be different from doing good. So some, most of you know CSR, where companies used to have corporate social responsibility and then once or twice in a year, they will take some amount and then put it into some um, CSR programs. So maybe they will go and paint some school or donate some food. Or, But as the world is evolving, the understanding that business is supposed to be for social good is getting more and more emphasized. So the act of doing business in itself should be tailored around how businesses can treat the environment well how businesses can treat their people directly or indirectly connected to the business as well. And then, of course, how businesses are managed in such a way that it guarantees sustainability and continuity. So now we are not saying that do your business anyhow, and then once a year or twice a year, commit some time, some resources, and some of your people to go and do some social good. As good as that is, it is not sustainable. So what we are saying is that every day in your business, Start thinking about how your business is treating the environment. 
what are the ways that you are contributing positively or negatively to the impact of, the, of your business to the environment. How are you treating people? That is your direct or indirect stakeholders, your employees, your partners, and every other person that is connected, your, your regulatory bodies, the people that you are supposed to get all the accreditations from, the people that you are supposed to be paying your taxes to, all those people are connected to your business as both internal and external stakeholders. The question is, how are you treating them? And the, the, the third one is, how are you managing your business? So in summary, really, that's what ESG is about. How do you build policies? How do you identify loopholes? And how do you ensure that those loopholes are being filled consistently? to ensure that your business, in it's the way it treats environment, the way it treats people, and the way it is managed holistically, is in a way that guarantees business continuity and resilience. And basically, that's what we are saying. That doing business is not different from doing good. And if that's the case, what is your policy that shows us what you are currently doing, what you intend to do, and what the challenges are for which you are working towards solving. That is basically what an ESG policy is, or an ESG framework is. And as we go along, you will get to understand. So let's look at ESG. It focuses on a company's efforts in these three areas. ESG is used by financiers and investors when considering where to invest. So environment, or environmental, social, and governance are three key areas that investors are now looking out for. And for those of you who are building big businesses and you have big dreams, and you want to build international businesses, you want to leverage on their efforts that AFTA is putting in to make your business go beyond borders, these things are very essential. And if this is the first time you're hearing about it, I'm hoping that you're going to put in a bit, of, a bit more effort to start researching and really going deep into how your business can build sustainable frameworks around the ESG to ensure continuity of business. All right? So as we go along, you realize that ESG is a factor in developing companies, policies, and products. Like I said, why should doing good and doing business be different? Because doing business in itself is doing good. Employing people is doing good. Building products that solves problems is doing good. Ensuring that private sector is growing and is acting as an engine of growth for business, for the government, is doing good. So then why should the two be different? And that's what ESG seeks to do. Ensuring that how you run your business and how you manage environment, people, and governance is not different. So ESG requires a holistic evaluation of the business to determine how it serves its stakeholders inside and outside of the company and the environment where it has influence. The relative focus on environment, social and governance will vary by company. So every company might have different ways they address these things, but at the end, you should be able to tell how you're building a framework that helps stakeholders to understand how an organization manages risk opportunities around sustainability issues. And going forward as business people, you're going to hear a lot about sustainability. Because gone are those days that we left these things to NGOs, non-profits, non-governments. Now everywhere, we are looking at how even for-profit businesses are being run like social enterprises. And I'm sure some of you have heard about social enterprises. The combination of social and capital-driven businesses. Now, when we break it down, you realize that the environment is, once you start measuring your environmental data, this will get you to, this, to start thinking of ways to cut energy, water, and waste usage. These are the three main things under environments that a lot of companies are looking at and measuring going forward. How do you use energy? Are you using sustainable, energy-efficient uh, bulbs? How are you managing your energy? How are you managing water? How are you managing your waste? And some of you are doing businesses that is into in, um, production. Some of you are doing businesses that generate a lot of waste. How do you manage this waste? Do you segregate them? Do you dispose of them you know, in the right way? These things may not be important to you until you want to go to the next level in your business and you need certain investment opportunities and resources. 
And because you haven't paid attention to these things, you probably will not be able to get access to those things. So in the social, you're looking at, this will certainly help you in today's world for skills and talent. Some of you are complaining that, oh, you're not getting the right people, or when they come, they don't stay. But you don't have any policy that shows them how your company treats your employees. You don't have any policies that shows the, the, the growth of their career in your business. You don't have anything that shows them that, listen, when they stay in your business, their, their personal ambition would be fulfilled. Because essentially, this is one of the things that business people should know. People work for themselves. People work for themselves, but they work with you. I would emphasize this again. People work for themselves. Sometimes they, them, so employees don't even know that this is the, the thing that is guiding the way they behave. But you are giving them an opportunity to demonstrate their skills. So as an employer, you need to be able to define how your business contributes to their personal ambition. And those are some of the things that as we go along, we are going to take a good look at. Um, can you still see my, I don't know what I find. Yes, I see you. That's great. So when you come to social, we are talking about the people that work with you. Do you have an attractive business culture that will help you to maintain low staff turnover? That social, that business culture is also going to help you attract more easily the bright talent you need to ensure growth. You see, business is nothing but people. And that is some of the things that some of us, we fail to recognize. Business is not your, your and I joined earlier, and you were talking about your assets, and your liabilities, and all that, and all that is well and good. But until you realize that business is nothing but people, you would not start growing. Because sometimes we just focus on getting the money, getting clients, moving from one place to the other, expanding our operations, failing to recognize that business is people. And as the people are growing, your business grows. It's not the other way around. Because when your business outgrows your people, you realize that you start losing clients. Because now the expectations of the clients are not being met because your business has outgrown the people that you are working with. So all the time, as part of your ESG policy or your ESG framework building, you need to ensure that you are consistently putting in place a measure that ensures the growth of your people. Are you training them? Are you giving them experiences beyond their comfort zones? Are you giving them exposure? Are you helping them to enhance their networks? What is it that you're doing for your, your employees, your team members, that is enhancing their capacity to be able to deliver on your expectation for growth? That is social. And how are you also enhancing the involvement and the satisfaction of other stakeholders beyond your business, i.e. your shareholders, your, your, your investors and other stakeholders in and around your business operations. Some of you are working in, in, in place, you have your office in communities and you don't even know who the MP is, you don't even know if the place has a chief or not, you don't really care, you're just doing business. One day you're going to attract an opportunity and people will want to know how your interaction as a business is with your community. And you'll be found wanting because you have not built a social policy that integrates what you're doing with your community. Business is no more for you. <laughs> business is supposed to be for social good. So that is why ESG exists. Now when we look at the third one because of time, the governance is focusing on how you govern your business. And in particular, devoting focus on risk management. Switch to low energy light bulbs use. Install smart power strips, and these are for production sites, things that are directional, you know, in your production floor and all that. Use smart power strips for those things. Reduce your water usage as much as possible. Make your workplace more heat efficient. Install built-in recycling units. And I'm sure some of you will be thinking by now that, hey, I call that, hey, now we can. Hey, we are small business, oh. And we are even struggling to, to survive. 
I mean, look at where the dollar is going. Look at where the economy is. We are struggling to survive. And you are talking about all these things, recycling and energy efficiency in your own small way. When do you put off the air condition? Do you open the windows? Do you put off the lights or you leave the lights on? In your own small way, how are you contributing to energy efficiency? In your own small way, how are you building a culture that that encourages diversity, a culture that encourages innovation, a culture that en enables the, the, the workers to speak up. In your own small way, how are you implementing a board system and then ensuring accountability of the way you run the business? In your own small way. That's all we are asking. We are not saying that start on a big scale and you know all those. No, no, in your own small way. How are you doing this? Now let's look at Sustainable banking principles, and these are directives even from Bank of Ghana that governs banking principles in Ghana. Principle one, and these are like how you can also summarize your own efforts at building your ESG framework. You can put them in principles like this. One, environmental, social, and risk management. So then when they write a principle like that, they start writing in bullet points things that they are going to do to ensure that they are reducing environmental and social risk. They are managing environmental and social risk. Two, internal environment, social and governance in banks' operations. Three, corporate governance and ethical standard. Four, gender equality. What is your policy? Now, thankfully, because of the internet, you will have a lot of resources. But instead of just copying and pasting, we are asking you, can you ensure that you are tailor making these policies to suit the state of your business, the form of your business, the, 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 the current size and magnitude of your business, the vision and the focus of your business, the people that work in your business, can you tailor make these things you are finding out to suit the business that you are in? That's what we are asking. Financial inclusion, how are you making sure that you are building a system that ensures transparency, accountability. How are you building a system that ensures that you are, building, you, are, you are credit worthy, you are investment ready? Some people say, oh me, I don't need anybody's money. Oh me, I don't, I don't like loan, no, I don't like loan. My sisters and brothers, if your business cannot attract loans, you are not on your way to growth. We are not saying that wait till you need a loan. Wait till you need investment until you put in place the right structures. No. Pretend that you need a loan. Go to your bankers and let them give you the requirements for getting a loan. Go to your investors and tell them, give me the requirements for getting an investment. Go to Chamber of Young Entrepreneurs and say, what does it take to get a loan? What does it take to get investment? What does it take to attract people? What does it take to maintain my staff? What does it take? Ask the questions and let them give you directives and start working on them now in your own small way. And whilst you are doing that, you realize that you are enhancing your capacity of the business and the capacity of your own self to ensure the sustainability of your business. Trust me, as you grow as a CEO, as a business director, as, a, as an employee, your business automatically also grows. So don't wait until you need it because your desperation automatically increases the risk that your business will be associated with at the point of need. Okay? And then the third principle is resource efficiency, sustainable, sustainable production and consumption. And of course, the third principle is reporting. It's not just about you getting things done. It's about documenting and reporting the things you're getting done. One of our biggest challenges as Africa is that we do not write our own story. We do not report on our own initiatives. We do not document our own successes. And when somebody tells you their story, they will tell it in the way that benefits them. Please, tell your own stories. Write your own reports. Write your own policies. Let us know how you are building directives on how you are managing the environment, how you are managing your people, and how you are managing your business through the governance structures you are putting in place. And today is only introductory. It is just to create a sense of awareness of what ESG is 
its importance, its benefits, and the steps you can start taking to start implementing your ESG policy. So first of all, think about where you are now as a business. How do you handle certain things that have that, that concern the environment? Waste, energy, and water. Two, how do you handle your people? Do they see their future in your business? Do they see their future in your business? Do they see the actualization of their own personal dreams in your business? Do they see that the business is going somewhere? Do they see that if they tag along, they will have a future in your business? Do they see that there's a culture that is being built and intentionally being managed and monitored in your business to enhance employee productivity and growth? Are you giving them opportunities to think on their feet? Are you giving them opportunities to be innovative? Are you even giving them opportunity to make mistakes and correct their mistakes? How are you treating people? And how are they building perception of your business and who you are? How are you managing your, 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 your board of directors? Some of you have board of directors, but I don't know. Hello? Please mute your microphone. Hello? Yeah, go. You can go ahead. Okay. So, so basically, this is what we are saying. Some of you have board members and don't even know what you are doing. They are just there. You don't send them reports. They don't have any meetings. They don't have any input in your business. They can't even guarantee whether your business is sustainable or not. And these are the things that we are talking about. They are very, very simple things. They are just putting it in context in such a way that it helps you to start thinking through how does my business in line with its contribution to social good treats the environment what is my policy on climate change what is my policy on energy efficiency what is my policy on waste management what are the directives i'm giving in my company on how we can manage water these things may sound like ah what's up but it is not even in the now, it is in the future. Because as you contribute to the growth of your business, one day you're going to attract opportunities. And because you didn't start taking action on the things we're telling you, you would lose these opportunities. So thank you. This is what I have for you today.